What's going on, everybody? Today I want to talk about something that a lot of people buy, but 99% of them will never use. That is plate carriers. So, there's so many people I know that are like hardcore preppers, and and I get it, you know, there, there could be, especially now with the coronavirus, and I, I told myself I wasn't going to speak on this thing because I think it's a bunch of BS, but it's the, the whole prepping thing is coming around again now because people are saying that the coronavirus is going to spread and blah, 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 whatever. Look it up. I'm not going to go into it because I think it's a bunch of BS. Anyways, there's a, the, the whole prepping thing, right? That's fine. Be a prepper if you want to be a prepper, but, you know, just be frugal about it. Don't don't spend a $1,000 on, you know, plates and a, and a carrier that you're probably never going to use. I mean, if you got the money, be it by all means. But, you know, like, don't buy that and then not buy your kid new shoes or something because that's just stupid, right? And also, if you, if, if the people that own a plate carrier, the small, maybe 3%, are actually going to use it. Law enforcement, military. Um, you know, if you're into that kind of thing and you like going and doing running guns and stuff like that, three-gun shootouts, whatever... You know, and you feel the need to wear an extra 20 pounds, go right ahead. You know, I mean, and, and on top of that, if you're going to buy a plate carrier, make sure it's going to stop rifle rounds. At least have level four, right? So, I, I carry a plate carrier in the in the squad car with me. Um, or if I'm driving my personal vehicle for work or whatever the case is. Um, I always have my rifle, my, my rifle plate carrier with me. And yes, it has level four plates in it. Yes, I do wear a ballistics vest. It's level 3A+. Plus. Um, and I have the rifle plate carrier strictly for that. If something happens and we get into an active shooter situation, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to go home at the end of the day if I take a round from a rifle. Uh, provided it's in the area that's covered by the plates. Everybody says, well, what about your head? You know, I mean, I'm not on the SWAT team or anything crazy, so I don't get a, you know, I don't get a, a brain bucket. I don't get a, a helmet. A ballistics helmet, but have I thought about actually buying one? Yeah. Would I ever use it? Probably not, so there's really no reason to have it. That's the way I would feel on it. A lot of you guys you know, buy stuff just to buy stuff because you have the money and you think it's cool, so be it. That's you. That's not me. You do you. I do me. Um, but, you know, I mean, when you, when you think of the aspect of it, if you don't have regular ballistics, a regular ballistic vest, like soft Kevlar, um, you know, and you're relying on a plate carrier for ballistics protection, I just don't think three level three is going to cut it. Uh, if you get an AP round coming at you, um, you know, out of a out of an AR or an AK or something, you know, you're, you're probably going to be SOL. You're probably still going to catch that round uh, in the meat. Um, if, if you don't need it, I just don't think you, you should waste your money on it. I mean, that's just my opinion, but... Take it for what it's worth, you know, everybody, you know the same. Babies are like egg holes, everybody's got one, right? They all stink. Um, but, you know, in a, in a real-world scenario, and if the, the shit ever did hit the fan, so to speak, I think a solid plate carrier with level, at least level four, and a day pack is a very, very good idea. Um, if something happens and your vehicle breaks down, in a real world scenario or even an active shooter situation and you're, you're stuck somewhere keep it in the back of your car, the trunk you know, if you drive a, uh, an SUV keep it in the back, in a, you know, Rubbermaid tote or something, so it's not visible to the naked eye if somebody just looks happens to look in your window um, well, I think a day pack with uh, you know, your normal stuff you know, some extra cash uh, an IFAC individual first aid kit, um, I think is important to have a camelback of some type uh, that you can fill with water in case you do have to hoof it somewhere. Some MREs, I mean, Walmart sells them for Christ's sake. Um, I think they're like seven or eight bucks. They're not actual MREs, they're you know just dehydrated food that you pour boiling water in, and you know, boom, you got it. Uh, I got a meal. Um, you know, dehydrated foods I think are important. Um, things of that nature. Uh, I'm just going to take the badge off my vest for now on when I do videos. It's annoying. Um, 
it's a, uh, you know, I mean, depending on the plates you get, it's an extra 20 pounds, you know, and if you're carrying a, a rifle with you, you're going to probably have three to six mags strapped to the front, because that's the cool thing to do, even though you may not need them. But, I, you know, I, and I sound hypocritical because I'm always the guy that says, you know, I'd rather have it and not need it than not need it and have it. Or, you know what I'm trying to say. Not, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. So, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. I just think there's a lot of people that waste their money on things they don't need. You know, I mean, I got, I got a good friend of mine. And he sees this. He's going to give me crap. And that's fine. I don't really care. But he's that guy. I mean, he's got... He's got like two or three different plate carriers. He's got more guns than the freaking local National Armory, uh, National Guard Armory, which is not a bad thing. You know, it is what it is. But I just... Some of his guns aren't practical. They're not collector weapons. They're just, oh, I wanted it, so I bought it. Five grand on a gun. I get it. You know, I mean, I spend more than that on motorcycles and cars and stuff, but there's more practical use for motorcycles and cars. Uh, I've bought some really expensive guns, and, you know, I've kind of come to realize that a $2,500 AR is going to do the same thing as a $500 AR. Or well, you should keep it clean and keep it lubed, and, I mean, you know, by the time you're done, that $500 AR is not going to be a $500 AR, you know. You can change the gas system in it, you know, different trigger, you know, upgrade everything in it. You know, you probably have a $1,000 AR, but still, it's the point of the matter. It's the same thing with a $2,500 AR, you know. By the time you're done, you're going to have a $3,500 AR. By, by the time that you fine-tune that weapon to your liking. Um, I just get a kick out of it when I see certain people who have all this junk they don't need. They have stuff just to have stuff. And it's just like, and no, I'm not talking about you, Ray, because you, some of the stuff you have is actually practical. But, <clears throat> you know, you I guess it's the same concept I have with Airsoft. I, I, Airsoft's, I guess, a cool way for kids to play around and have fun. But then you see the guy show up looking like straight T.I. Joe Commando. And then all through the all through the the, the match or the video or... Uh, I, I can't say the match because I've never been to a live one before. It's, I mean, I guess it's not really my thing. Um, but, you know, I've watched some videos on YouTube here and... They, they don't use half the crap they've got on their freaking vest. What do you need an IFAC for during a during a uh, uh, airsoft match? You're, what's the, what are you gonna do? Cut yourself on something? You put a bandaid on it and you go about your day. I mean, some of these places, uh, you know, that they go to and they do these airsoft matches. There's some people out there that get really in depth and serious about it. But it's just, I think it's funny. I don't know. Um, one guy on here actually has steel plates in his in his plate carrier for airsoft. You buy most of these cheap twenty dollar carriers on eBay. They come with foam pads in them. I would say that's probably good enough for a plastic BB. <laughs> Just saying. I don't really don't think you need to spend a hundred bucks on a set of plates and an IFAC too. I mean, what do you need an IFAC for during playing airsoft? I, I mean, I I really don't understand. Anyways play carriers, the, buy a quality one if you actually actually need it, if you're going to use it, if you're in law enforcement, if you're in military, in the military, um, you know, most of the time if you're in some kind of spec ops unit or something, stuff's going to be readily available for you. Uh, if you're that picky, buy your own if they allow it, whatever the case. Law enforcement, some departments are picky about, you know, no mile, um, There's so many departments now that are getting rid of the tactical look because they say it's threatening to, you know, the general public. But, you know, somebody told me the other day, if a store needs... and So, <laughs> some security officers are unarmed, right? And the mindset of these corporate people at certain retail stores is... They're going to make customers are going to feel uncomfortable walking into a store if there's an armed security officer there. The truth and reality of it is, if there's an arms, if there's an unarmed security officer there, people are going to question that, and they're going to say, you know, is it really that bad that you, got, you know the store needs security here? 
They don't care whether you have a gun on you or not. It's the simple fact of the matter is, is that the store has security there. That That is a red flag enough. And I think it's a horrible, horrible idea for security officers to be unarmed, to not have a gun. Because uh, there's, a, there's a Facebook page, uh, privateofficer.org or privateofficer.com or something, and they're constantly posting stuff about unarmed security officers being shot. And you know why? Because they couldn't shoot back. And it's it's ridiculous. And I, I don't I don't agree with it at all. And the corporate mindset is, is that uh, we don't want security officers. We don't want the security officers in the store to have a gun. It's a bad image. Just a security officer in the store is a bad image. It doesn't matter if they got a gun on or not. Let me tell you that right now. And I hope this reaches some corporate people. I'm not going to call. I'm not going to say what I'm really feeling. I'm just going to say corporate people, right? Because that mindset is just ignorant. Just like gun-free zones. The gun-free zones are target-rich environments for criminals. Criminals don't care. So that that there again just says, hey, I've been in this store five or six times, and that security officer over there is unarmed. I might just try something stupid with a gun one day. In a criminal mindset, right? Because what are they going to They know they're not going to get shot at back because there's nobody there to shoot at them. Now, there's some crazy security officers out there that, you know, would probably still go after them with a gun as long as they have, you know, proper uh, PPE, you know, i.e., uh, you know, ballistic vest, baton, pepper spray, or something of that nature, taser, whatever the case, combat experience, hand-to-hand experience. Um, but again, anyways, I get off point. Sorry, I'm rambling. Uh, play carriers. Buy a quality one if you actually need it. Spend the money on level 4 plates to actually stop an AP rifle round, level 5 plates, whatever the case is. Whatever you think you need, as long as it's going to stop a rifle round. Um, you know, if, if, if you're not in shape and you have this thing sitting in your house or your car for the one day that you might need it, I would definitely suggest you go out on a hike one day with six loaded AR mags and your 20 pounds of steel plates in your carrier and go for an hour-long hike so you get the feel of carrying that extra weight around because I can tell you from experience, that shit is heavy. Having six fully loaded AR mags and 20 pounds worth of steel plates, that shit gets heavy after an hour, um, you know, hiking around in the woods. Uh, And go one step further, load, you know, 60 pounds, a 60-pound ruck on your back with, you know, random camping stuff and stuff that you would need to survive if you already have a go bag or a loadout bag, whatever you want to call it. Um, You know, go for an hour-long hike out in the woods with all your prepper gear and see if you'd actually make it in the real in a real world scenario where you had to go out and and you know fight to survive where you had to go out and you had to run through the woods to get away from an active shooter situation or uh, a community that just went to a small town that just went to hell because uh, virus uh, there was a virus outbreak and everybody panicked and it's you know everybody's uh, looting each other's houses and it's you know like a basically free game for anything um the chances of that happening are slim to none but the truth and reality of it is is it could happen but anyways if you're gonna buy a rifle carrier buy a quality one a plate carrier buy a quality one buy quality plates with a uh, from a reputable company with a good um good reviews do reviews or watch reviews on the plates um Spend the money on what you think you need, but at least get level four because there's really no point in having rifle plate carrier if it's not going to stop a rifle round. Simple as that. Anyways, you guys have a great day. Do your research. Watch some reviews. Spend. Don't cheap out on on a plate carrier. Simple as that.